Hello everybody and welcome to Project Trade. This is the Technical Indicator Show and we are talking about the Standard Deviation Indicator. The mathematical concept of standard deviation was brought to us by the English statistician Carl Pearson around about 1893. It's used in statistics to measure the dispersion of a set of data values compared to the average of that data. For us, that means it tries to help us understand the general price movement that it's assessing. The standard deviation indicator is a volatility oscillator with a single line that oscillates between values which are relative to the asset that you're trading. The price of different assets can vary greatly between them and therefore so too can the values of the standard deviation indicator. For example, the price of gold is incredibly different to the price of Bitcoin. But the general idea across all assets is that if the standard deviation indicator shows a relatively high deviation reading, that means that there is higher price volatility. And if there's a low deviation reading, then there's lower price volatility. Let's see that formula so we can understand how it all works. First, we just have to do a quick, simple moving average calculation as we're going to use that as our mean average in the formula. That is just adding together the price for each of the individual periods that you are looking back at and dividing that by the total number of periods. There's the easy part, but let's get on to our standard deviation formula. Definitely going to get a bit more complicated here. We'll start with this sigma symbol. It looks a bit like a capital E and it means the total of or the sum of. That lowercase letter n above it means that we have to do the top part of that division calculation for each of the individual periods. Hence why we need that sigma symbol to total all the individual calculations. It saves writing them out one by one, which would look quite convoluted. But it means that if we are using the default input of periods for the standard deviation indicator, which is 14, we'll be doing the formulas on the top half of the division for each of the 14 periods. And so for each of those 14 periods, we take the closing price and we subtract from it the current simple moving average. Important to note that that's the current simple moving average, not that period's particular simple moving average. Then you square your figure, and as we said, repeat that for each of the 14 periods. You can then take that total and divide it by 14 periods, or whatever input you're using. That total is the figure known as the variance. Then finally, to calculate our standard deviation value, we can square root that variance figure. It's not the easiest to grasp, so it might be better if I explain it through a table. In our example here, we are using a set of daily gold prices. In the left-hand column of our table, you can see we simply list the 14 periods. In the column to the right of that, we note the closing price for each of those periods, and we total it up at the bottom. Then dividing that total by 14 gives that current simple moving average. And you can see in the middle column there that that figure is consistent throughout. And as we shift again one column to the right, there we're just doing the closing price minus the current simple moving average. Then in the column on the far right, we've squared all of those individual answers, and in the bottom right-hand corner, we've added them all together. Once we've got that total, we divide it by the number of periods, which in our example is 14. That gives us our variance of 71.97, meaning we can finally calculate the square root of the variance to reveal our standard deviation oscillator reading of 8.484 for the current period. It does get a bit complicated there, and if you're not a fan of the maths, then good effort for listening to it. Unless, of course, you skip forward to this part, in which case, shame on you. Don't worry, though, unless you are set on hand drawing your oscillators by quill and ink, then the platform will do all of this work for you. And after it does do all of that for you, here's what it comes out looking like using the default settings, and it is clear that this indicator oscillates. If you're someone who's just listening instead of watching, please do take my word for it. The indicator oscillates. Even though we We've used the default settings in our formula and discussion so far, you can change certain aspects of the calculation. If you want to change the method of how the moving average is calculated, because you don't like the simple moving average, then on MetaTrader at least, they do give you the options of the exponential average, the smoothed average, or the linear weighted average. There's also the choice of which part of the price the moving average will apply to. Typically for me, I do tend to avoid the high or the low options, which can give more anomalous answers, so I tend to prefer something with a close, but you do exactly as you will for your own strategy. Moving on then, can the standard deviation indicator give us any entry signals? Don't forget when we're looking at the standard deviation indicator that it isn't actually telling us anything about price direction. It's just giving us the volatility of price. If you see, there's an area marked with the yellow rings where we see the price is going up and so too is the standard deviation value. But there are times where price is going down and yet the standard deviation value is still going up. So it's going the exact opposite direction. These two rings over here do show a grand example 
example of that. If we're just looking at the indicator, then it's obviously on the rise. But when we glance up, we see that the price is actually headed downtown. And this is exactly what we mean when we say that you aren't going to be relying on the indicator for price direction. You will need another indicator confirming that information for you. Or just eyeball the price like all the pro guru Ferrari owning master winners like Future Me do. Now, depending on what asset you are trading, you can set relative levels towards the high or low of where the standard deviation value typically tends to peak or trough. You could then set some of your strategy rules around those levels. For example, when volatility has been low for a long period of time and it breaks out of the lower level, that could be the nod to you to check if the increased volatility is shifting the price along with it. Or you could only enter sell trades in the higher volatility range to try and make money from everybody panic selling. Maybe you want your trades to be smaller or larger in terms of the volume that you place on them in those high volatility periods, either trying to minimize the risk reward or maximize the risk reward depending on your predilection. Or for that matter, the indicator could just simply work as a filter on volatility that you only trade in high volatility times or low volatility times. It doesn't have to just be the amount that you're trading. It can be whether you trade at all. As you can tell, though, on the whole, this isn't going to be your best indicator for entry signals. Let's shuffle over to our money management and see if we've got any uses for it over there. And I think it's fair to say that it certainly does have a use here. That is setting your stop loss and or your take profit levels based on the standard deviation risk. Those levels could be based on one time standard deviation value of risk from your entry price, two times, eight times, if you do want it potentially to be open for a very long time. It's your choice, but it is a handy way to manage your risk around the volatility of price. So here in our example for all of that, if we enter this buy trade where our green line is, and we're going with one time standard deviation for both take profit and stop loss levels, which are marked there in the red dotted line, that is the distance that we get to work with for the trade before it gets cut off one way or another. We could also use the same concept but as a trailing stop loss instead. We could trail the stop loss say two times the standard deviation value back from our entry price. Then if that price does progress in the favour of our trade then so too will the trailing stop loss. It will never fall back. Overall this gives us the chance to let our trades run a bit more when we are winning without affording that same benefit to our losses. So you can see how the standard deviation indicator can potentially be used as a flexible money management tool. In the markets, standard deviation is effective across all assets as it's effective in general statistics and is applied to numerous mathematical models outside of the markets. Not every mathematical concept is about trading, but it does mean that you can give it a go in forex, metals, stocks, cryptocurrencies, bonds, whatever you're trying to measure volatility on. Also, there's certain times in certain markets where we already know that there's a high probability that the price action is going to be more volatile. You don't have to be surprised that the standard deviation reading is going up at the stock market open or just after the non-farm payroll date has been released. A lot of these times can be completely planned for in your schedule and if you need to adjust your strategy to account for those type of events then whether you want the increased volatility or you don't want it make those adjustments. Take a look at how it does react at certain times in the market throughout different days. You'll probably start noticing patterns across each of the assets. But what other indicators do we have out there that are similar to the standard deviation oscillator? I'm sure that especially after hearing the money management description I've given of the standard deviation indicator that a lot of you might know the indicator that I'm going to say first. It's the average true range, that's right, the ATR, which is used in a similar fashion to the standard deviation for an effective stop loss take profit money management system. They are both measuring volatility but without giving you that price direction. Here they are on top of one another, both using 14 periods, and even though the ATR on the bottom comes out looking a bit smoother than the standard deviation, similar ups and downs in the oscillators are apparent. And if we check the readings of the indicators in our example here, the standard deviation is reading at 0 0.00056 and the ATR is reading at 0 0.00051. So those readings are not worlds apart in terms of what they're actually going to do for you. This means that one of them can be used as a substitute for the other, but do be aware that the standard deviation indicator will generally give higher highs in its reading than the average true range does when it does get volatile. And when there's no volatility at all, the standard deviation generally reaches lower lows than the ATR does so it can be a bit more extreme in that sense but it's not all just about being similar sometimes it is nice to be flattered by being used as part of another indicator for example standard deviation is used in the Bollinger Bands indicator calculation which by default puts bands of two times standard deviation either side of a 20 period simple moving average it looks like this on our chart and anywhere we measure it that distance if we've plugged it in for two times standard deviation that's what it's going to show you it tries to help interpret the 
assets volatility as it is alleged that 95% of price action happens within those Bollinger Bands at two times standard deviation. I haven't done the exact maths on that yet, so cannot yet confirm. In conclusion though, standard deviation is a particularly useful mathematical concept for analysing data dispersion within statistics. It won't be giving you price signals from the chart, you are just getting that volatility. Which does help though if you're trying to find reversals or breakouts on the indicator itself, which might indicate a price move. But whether the reading of the indicator is going up or down, that doesn't necessarily mean that price is going up or down. It can still be going either way. You are going to have to perform an ocular price assessment to figure out which way it's going. The indicator can work well in money management though, where it gives you a consistent measure of risk to be able to use across assets, which is the key to it all really, minimizing those losses and getting those profits where appropriate. And there we go, that is it, but there is more information and links in the description if you want to check those out. And do remember, every single chart in this video has been specifically pre-selected for showing you how the indicator may or may not work. Fear not though, I have used this indicator in live forward testing strategies and will also link those in the description. This is Project Trade, I am the Million Dollar Man, Trade DBSE. Thank you for watching.